many people use it to ask me about how i use my painting knife like that how i use my painting knife as a brush this is the question they use it to ask me because the way i am using a knife on canvas whenever they look at me when i am doing painting they use it to get surprised how you are using knife like that yeah just to is a simply take a brush i am going to answer for that question in this video where i painted bushes with my painting knife there you can listen and see my answer in that video and i am giving another video also in this there also you see how i painted a landscape with a knife using how i captured values colors broken color effects textures and everything so you may find the answer you may realize what's my secret how i am using painting knife as a brush when whenever i'm seeing someone painting with a knife i use it to get surprised why they don't use knife as a brush why they are using the knife a different way rather than how they are using a brush there's a question always i used to ask myself whenever i am painting i won't bother much about whether water i am using in knife or a brush doesn't matter to me i won't care much about the tool what i am handling all i care about what i have to capture on my canvas i think the problem lies with that we are using a knife as a knife is related to our thought process when you are using a knife we, we are very conscious about that we are using knife not a brush so we have to use it in a different approach rather than a brush how we use it why we are thinking like that i think the problem connected with visual thinking when you don't have clarity about what you need to capture on canvas or what you are going to capture on canvas you are conscious about the tools the medium the surface i'll say everything 
but your thinking about you are having a clarity about you are having a feeling about what you need to get on your canvas tools and materials won't be a matter to you all you will bother about how to get the shapes the color the values the final outcome how to capture it on canvas so whether you are using a knife or brush then it won't matter to you it won't be really matter to you all is matter to you is the subject how to get it on canvas so that's why whenever i am working on canvas that it may be a landscape that it may be a portrait or any other thing i want to care about what i am using it may be a knife small or large it may be a brush small or large it may be oils it may be acrylic it may be pastels whatever medium it may be i always think about what i have to capture on canvas rather than what i am using to create a painting so think about what i am saying that's why and now i am using knife on canvas i am always using it as a brush rather than a knife that's the secret for handling of my knife people used to ask me how you are using a knife like that this is a secret for that question i answered it use it think about what you have to get on canvas not about what you are the material what you are using that's my feeling that's my opinion I start painting without much planning. All I have to do putting some approximate colors on the surface. and i am taking that uh, orange it helps me to achieve color transition from value to value tonal color to tonal color the top of the canvas is now very lighter value the bottom of the canvas is having a darker value 
So the color transition goes from like this. From light yellow to medium yellow, medium yellow to orange, orange to green. So four values I applied on the surface of the canvas. Now I started with knife. My aim is creating some textures, some grass like structures. So I applied light yellow to get some focal point there. At the end of the painting, my focal point will be in this area where I applied light yellow with knife. See now again same thing what I have done on the surface now same thing I am doing. I put orange, I, I take some blue violet and I apply them to get some textures. They may be grass, they may be little bit muddy ground, a little bit rough ground with uh, small and large stones, rocks and bushes and many things, whatever they may be. What we see in the nature, that feeling I would like to capture on canvas. See how I am playing with knife. I am not having some kind of approach to use knife. I use knife whatever way I feel is required. It is spontaneous. See that blue violet. What it is doing? It is pushing the background little bit backward. So the foreground came forward now. The orange, the greens, they came forward. The blue violets, the yellow violets, the yellows, the light yellows, all are gone backward. So this way I achieved some three-dimensional effect. The foreground is where the oranges and greens are the foreground, where the blue violets, orange violets, yellow violets are the middle ground. The lightest yellow, which is a, which represents light, is in the top of the horizon. That means you call it a, or you feel it, it might be a sky. Now I am extending that blue violet towards foreground. And I applied that green also to achieve color balance through color repetition. Repeating the color here and there will give you harmony and it will achieve balance also. So the strokes with knife will giving you some large gross feeling, some air feeling, the movement, it will give that movement. On and off, cutting the value with a knife will give you mysterious and some interesting shapes on the ground. 
I have a problem when I am painting this uh, because my camera is not getting the right focus. Sometimes the painting become lighter. Sometimes it become uh, what you call it normal. But I am trying to solve this problem in next videos. Bear with me the problem with the, this video, what I am facing. It is interesting. I don't know anything about these uh, videos or these technologies or this uh, focus or anything. But I am trying to get used with that. In painting it is also like that. You don't know what you are going to paint. But especially when you paint with imagination, you don't know what you are going to paint. But there is like there the fun lies. You don't know what you are going to paint. And you are moving with a certain curiosity, certain what you call it, visual insight. Sometimes you may get interesting shapes. Sometimes you may not. But it's a good exercise. It's a fun. If everything is there, what the fun you will get? So, playing with uh, what you call it uh, unknown <laughs> is the exact word, unknown. I don't know what I'm going to get uh, next moment because I'm not having any photographic reference or I'm not working from life. All I'm working from Imagination. See the greens. Why I am putting the greens? The background I put the light greens, yellow greens. So, putting the dark greens in the foreground, the greens mixed with the violets. So, yellow complementary is violet. So, that complementary violet when you mix with green, that will give you dark value at the same time. That will help you to get color balance also. See now how beautiful the textures and all those things. What you want to achieve is the rugged grounds, the rugged bushes and trees. It's, it should be, it's like uh, when you are in the entering into the forest, you feel that ruggedness, that roughness, that hardness, that what you call it, uh, complex. Uh, uh, textures, shapes that will give you, that will fear you, that will interest you, that will make you more adventurous to move more unknown areas. Painting like this will give you all those feelings. It's like entering into a forest. See the greens. And I applied that a little bit of oranges in the foreground. So those orange reds, those the, the which are applied in the middle ground, and the yellows in the background. Yellow is a part of orange. Orange also is a part of mix a combination a part of yellow. So when it comes to the violet, it is basically blue and red. So you are mixing all the primaries, but with certain combinations, with certain ratios. Using all the three primaries, and three secondaries, primaries are yellow, blue, red, secondaries are green, violet and orange. Mixing all this, uh, using all these six in different combinations will give you beautiful atmosphere and warm and color, cool color feeling of the nature. Here I apply, in this painting, I applied more warm colors than cool. I have, actually, there is, in even cool colors, there is warmness. See that green? There is warmness because it's mixed with yellows. See that violets? They are mixed with reds. And yellows is already warm color. So, it is, the, this painting is majorly dominated by warm colors. See now I am applying some light. That is my focal point. You don't need to match, you don't need to rub every color into the background. Just leave it as it is with some 
clear uh, patches but the patch is a should be part of tonal value the, it, it has to interact properly with surrounding values then in the end it won't appear like a patch it won't appear like a separate stroke because it is a part of the tonal color combinations tonal colors basically see the light see some small stroke are applied because it give you continuous traveling of the light now i am playing i am planning to draw trees these are my verticals till this minute i painted mostly diagonals so the background trees the bushes and everything is diagonal only that the light part a little bit horizontal not totally horizontal a little bit horizontal slightly horizontal so totally this painting mix uh, worked with diagonals so a small touch of here and there horizontals now what i am doing is verticals those three sort verticals they will give they will give the balance to the diagonals horizontals which i composed in the background painting trees is easy if you don't understand them they are difficult see i put some uneven place in between those two three trunks painting any even places between two objects will give you bore is boring basically so make little bit uneven spaces that will interest you and uh, under toughest thing for a amateur drawing uh, branches these branches uh, if you don't understand them properly they will look odd so understand them they appear natural all you require is some understanding for that observe nature how the branches connected with the tree trunk how they are moving how they are bending all these things just is matter of observation if you observe them properly it's really exciting it's really enlightening you will get the trees will branches and everything properly you don't need to do paint you don't need to draw anything with perfection there is no such a thing exist draw them approximate appearances in painting they look natural in painting uh, audience with the viewer will see the colors and their uh, interactions and many things about balance all these things they cover here and there the imperfections the artist job is applying working with imperfections finally achieving perfection see again i am telling working with imperfections finally achieving perfection that is artist job here i am doing that this is second focal point of this painting you call it subordinate focal point the final that light in the top of the, at the top of the painting is focal point but here i am uh, painting some subordinate focal point because it will balance the uh, top light the the top sunlight this human figure this small human figure will give the support to that focal point it will take you the eye there without jumping first you will see this human figure because it's close to you and it's interesting after seeing that your eye will travel slowly to the light the top of the light see now the trees are 
again they are also subordinate focal point first you will see the human figure then you will see the trunks then you will see the light at the top of the canvas here i used one focal point and two subordinate focal points that's the beauty of painting if you apply all these things 